Um, BA with the shoulder will be limited and Ambry Thomas with the knee will be limited. Go ahead. Uh, is IU trending in the right direction? Um, enough to be limited. That's in the right direction, right? Yeah, I think so. We have to see from him. I'm, I'm assuming it'll be a game time decision. What, what's the plan for Thursday with him? Before just that um, the trainers and him himself tell me that he can go. A walkthrough today, basically, or is it anything like a real practice? No, it's always walkthrough on Thursdays. Um, we go out for a walkthrough, do that. We come in, we watch it, and then we go out again for a second walkthrough later. So. Well, the other day when you talked about the workload with Christian Elijah, is that a conversation you have to have with Elijah, or, or he gets it? Uh, I haven't yet. I mean, it can be like that sometimes. Um, I mean, the week before, I think Elijah got in for 10 plays, which was closer. Um, we still did it more than that last year, but um, I wasn't expecting him not to get in at all. So when I see him, I'll, I'll say something to him. Now, I talked about how, uh, how much you saw from Brock last year in the Thursday night game in Seattle and uh, through the injury. Why was that so meaningful for you in terms of being able to project what he could be for you moving forward? Um, it was just the situation we're in was so unique to where he was our third. We were down to our third string quarterback at the time, um, and then when he had that bad injury, um, just you know bringing in Josh from another team and everything on, on a short week and stuff, we, it was just so different not having the guys that have been here, and so to give him all that time up to kickoff, we probably wouldn't have if um, we had been in a different situation where guys had been in our building and played longer, um, but we had to give him every moment and um, just. What he pulled off, you know, we didn't think he was going to be able to play, and then for him to be able to do it and then play the way that he did play um, was so impressive. Is that one of those things that you don't know what someone's made of until they can actually show it to you? Is that yeah, kind of. I mean, you got an idea just watching them. Um, you got an idea hanging around them, um, but those are moments that I don't think I don't. I want to say necessarily what they're made of. He, I think he's proven that a lot, but. Um, I think guys don't know what they're capable of pulling off till they get in those positions. And Brock is going to pull off anything he can. That's what was cool talking to him that whole week because he's not a guy who just tells you what you want to hear. Like, yes, coach, I'll be ready. I'm fine. And then they get to the game and they're not ready. Um, Brock was honest with us all week. And I knew there was times he didn't think he'd be able to. Um, and he was going to be honest with us. But um, when it got close to kickoff, he's like, hey, I think I can do this. Let me try. And then he tried. And as the first quarter went, he gained confidence. And so did we as it went. You know, Debo came up here in, in, in the summer and said he was disappointed with his season previously. We know that you might have had a meeting with him. And tell, did you start that process? Did Debo come to you, like kind of go back over the last season? How did that all kind of begin? Um, Debo comes to talk a lot, but I mean, I'd say I started that conversation a little bit. Just I'd spent a lot more of the off season here, so I'd been going through the tape for five months straight, you know, and, and Debo missed phase one and two and came in phase three. So it was the first time I got to see him in a while. And we had a lot of stuff to catch up on. Usually you review all that stuff earlier on. But um, since he missed that, we waited till then. And um, it was a very positive, good conversation. It wasn't hard or anything, but it was, it was a very real conversation. That's what I love about Debo so much because he's an extremely real person. And if you talk to him the right way and you show him stuff, he's not going to be a BS us or himself. And um, I didn't expect him to come have that reaction with you guys a couple hours later. Um, but I was, I'm very pleased with the result. How does, he might have been disappointed he wasn't a captain last year. But how significant? And do you think the team, the players, were reacting to what they saw from him in the offseason to make him a captain this year? I think so. I mean, I, I didn't ask them personally, but I, I know he was close to that the year before and didn't get it. I didn't know that it would bother him. Um, you know, he didn't really let me know that. But after I could tell, I kind of did. Uh, he was just, I think he wanted it more than I realized. Um, so I kind of had, had an idea he was disappointed last year. And um, I thought it was really cool when I got those votes uh, that the team had voted for him because um, they didn't the year before, even though it was close. And I think it was because of his training camp, how he came to training camp, the way he handled himself, not just on practice, but everywhere. And I think it was a very genuine vote by all the players. You, you have to take into account TJ Watt and Aaron Donald the first two games. So what, what strikes you about the Giants defense going into this one? It's usually, I mean, there's people every week, you know, TJ from the edge and um, Aaron from inside. I mean, they got as good of inside players here, too. I mean, Dexter Lawrence is, you know, it's our first time really seeing them, but just watching them the last 24 hours, he's as good as advertised. Leonard Williams has always been a great player. Both of their edges um, are, are good also. So they got a very good front and um, similar challenges the last two weeks. Going back to Debo, how does Debo through two games look different than Debo of last season? 
Um, he's just he's in much better condition. He had a much better training camp. He was able to get through it all um, and get better throughout it. You know, last year he had some setbacks coming in, um, wasn't able to go through training camp and kind of was in and out throughout the whole year. And um, now it's just like camp. He's in the best shape, doesn't have to come out as much, doesn't have to take as many plays off, and, um, and is playing as good as um, I've seen him play. Turns on your interior pass rush with, with Javon and, and Eric and obviously um, Javon Kinlaw. Uh, I thought in the second half it got going, you know, not just with our defensive line, but our, our secondary with it. Um, I thought, um, you know, the Rams came out and re really we gave them a lot of hope there in that first half. Um, you know, their offense kind of controlled the ball. I think it was all three series that they scored on. That second half, I was real proud of our guys. Usually when you give an offense a lot of hope like that and the confidence, it, it gets only harder. Um, but our guys came out. I thought our coverages got tighter and um, we caught a couple more pressures too, which put a little bit of pressure on them. Um, but once that started to happen, I thought every guy, everybody started making guys miss, making Stafford get rid of the ball a little bit earlier. And I think it led to a couple turnovers. As a former receiver, what's your thoughts on uh... – what you thought of Puka Nakua, and how did you feel about the way you guys defended him in this last game? Um, I mean, he was he was great. I mean, he's a really good football player. We liked him a lot coming out of college. I think I compared him to Juwan a little bit last week, and just the energy he plays with, um, how tough he is. Um, seeing him in person, he was a little bit bigger than than I realized on tape, even though we knew he was big. Um, but just the way he did it all game, you know, he the stamina he had, how hard he played, and that's why Stafford got a lot of confidence as he went. Uh, we gave him a little bit too much room. Um, that's why he had to tighten up as the game went on. Uh, two questions about Purdy. One on the uh, just before halftime when there was one second left, should he like skid the ball at like McCaffrey's feet on that instead of like sailing it? And then yeah, hopefully, yeah, the it didn't make us a little nervous. It was too good of a throw away. Supposed to do like just. Throw in the ground? Yeah, uh, no. I mean, it's got to be. You got to throw it away to where you don't get a penalty. So it's got to pass the line of scrimmage and stuff like that. But it's just when all you're doing is watching that clock and hoping that hoping that they don't screw you in any way. And especially being on the road, usually it goes to zero, and then you got to have people look at it and put it back to one. But um, it was at one. I was just nervous that it was close enough that they were going to try to go to zero and see if the refs could correct it. And then the other one on that same drive, the 20 yard completion to. Jennings, uh, where he threw it, and Juwan had his back to him. Still, I mean, has he come? Has he progressed in that area as far as trusting those type of throws um, since his rookie year? Um, no, I mean. I think he's doing the same. It just depends what type of game we're in. I mean, that was a play that we usually we go to that spot um, last versus zone, and you're hoping that um, everyone's covered everyone else, and you sneak this guy out the backside. And we've done it a lot over the years. Um, but they played man-to-man, -man and the nickel followed him the whole time. So by the time Brock got to him, which he's three in the progression, you're trying to sneak him out there, and you look to him, the ball's got to go, and he wasn't man. Um, so he gave a tight um, ball placement, gave him an opportunity, and very similar to the opportunity he gave B.A. on the go route um, versus Pittsburgh. And those are 50-50 balls, and both of our guys have come down with it this year. With that play with, I think it was six seconds, the second to last play, is there a specific play that you have that you know is supposed to take only – Four or five seconds that that you call for a situation. Like that. Um, yeah, I mean, not specific play, but I mean, there's all types of plays. You just know, you have the time for number one, and if number one's not there, don't mess around. You know, we those are ozone situations. We call it. it's got to be out of bounds or in the end zone, or the game's over, or in that case, the half's over. And um, when your play's not there, if you do it quicker, you get two shots, and that's something we told him with all three plays. What challenges does Daniel Jones present? Um, huge challenge. I mean. Um, I mean, it starts with his legs. I mean, anytime you have that speed and you can run the ball like he does, they're willing to run him. Um, he's willing to run. He's physical when he runs, and he's got the skill set to run away from people. So anytime you got a quarterback like that, um, the challenge it does just schematically on, on unlocking your defense and making you have to play a certain way is always a, a pain. Um, and then he's got the ability to play in the pocket and beat you that way too. So he's getting better each year. Um, really, we all really loved him coming out, and um, he's, I think, one of the main reasons he took him to the playoffs last year, and uh, he played really unbelievable there in that second half on Sunday. Coach, from a preparation standpoint, how tough is it Thursday? Do you just feel really rushed? Yes. Um, it, uh, you feel extremely rushed. Um, you know, I, I saw the players a few hours ago, and it was the first time I saw them. I told him it was Wednesday morning, and um, by 
our, the end of our first meeting, it was Thursday. It was kind of how we explained it. And tomorrow morning is Friday. Um, but by 10 o'clock, it's the day before the game. Um, so it's weird. Um, we were throwing four days into two days. As coach and staff, we throw two days into one day. Um, so it's kind of a uh, loss for words when I can't swear up here. Um, it's, it's a something show um, as as we do it. But then it's about retaining it when it slows down. Like we've got to put them all through it, the players. So we just throw it all at them. We go out and walk through it twice. We go watch it. It's just, and then it'll slow down tonight when they leave. But that's usually about sleeping and catching up. And then tomorrow, kind of when you get to the hotel, it's like, all right, now it's, now it's normal, even though it's not. Uh, but now it's Saturday night and slow it down a little bit. I always love Thursdays are night games um, because I think it's important on the day of the game to kind of review your whole week, which is the day before, um, on all the stuff that came in so um, you don't hesitate in the game. Murray made a play where it almost looked like he was going to take the hand off. In the first Who's that? Hargrave. Oh, yeah. The first, first Did he just beat a guy off the line or did he not block him? And has he had the impact that you'd hope you have through two games? Yeah, he's a problem. He's, I mean, Stafford did a good job getting rid of the ball when he was there, um, which I do think affects him and makes him rush it and makes you lose confidence as the game goes and how long you can hold on to it. But that was, they just busted on their own line and um, he shot the gap fast and he had a choice for the quarterback or the running back and he chose the wrong one. Um, but he almost took the handoff. So it's always tough in that situation, which one to pick. Like about Anthony Brown to shine him um, just you know playing against him, his experience. You know we've had some injuries here, especially the DB position and stuff. And um, we want to make sure that we have a guy ready to go in case we have some more. And um, you know I loved him. We all loved him in Dallas. Um, we know he's been here at Pittsburgh working with those guys, and just feel fortunate to get him right here right now. Tom, how's your offensive line looking after the first two weeks in Europe? Um, solid, good enough for us to win. Um, but like every other position on our team, um, we're still not there yet. Just trying to improve with each game we get. You just documented how busy you've been, but I asked this question uh, because I know you wore his jersey. But have you seen any of Deion Sanders and, and how he's doing? Do you have any thoughts on just what he's done in this role as a Head coach? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been fun to watch. It's been really cool. Um, you never know how it's going to work out with them just going there and the whole transfer rules and stuff, which I don't even understand. Hopefully I won't ever have to. Um, you don't know how it's going to work, but he's just fun to watch. Um, you know, just everyone being such a fan of him growing up and then how cool he is now. Um, but really what made it real was just watching their first game. You know, we didn't have, that was a week before we started and I was actually just hanging out at the house and I got to watch them versus TCU. And to watch how their team played was the coolest thing. I mean, everyone knows how cool Dion is, but um, uh, we always talk about the silent tape and how a team looks. And to watch those dudes come out and battle and how hard they played and the confidence they had, that was what made it so fun to watch. And um, I'm from Colorado, so my, my wife went there. You know, best man at my wedding went there. Um, I'm not a big fan of there. I'm, I'm a Longhorn, so, but it's, they're actually making some of us like CU right now. Um, even we got a lot of CSU guys in our office, and last week they even admitted that CU is pretty cool right now. But, um, and then last week we finished, it was a night game, so when we were done with our meetings, we got to see the, the um, fourth quarter um, in my hotel room, which um, their backs were against the wall, and they stepped it up and got it done. So it's been cool to watch and fun for sports, and probably got the most hype team going on right now. So, can't get mad about that. All right, guys. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks.